and well. This is Dr. B.D. Vaisi, Associate Professor, Mechanical Engineering Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In today's session, we will be learning about the basics of screw friction and the application of screw friction in the screw jet. First, let us understand what a screw is. A screw is used for lowering or raising very large masses by pushing or pulling up or down inclined plane, having a shallow gradient. Nothing but, if you imagine a plane, two-dimensional plane, a rectangular plane, which is wound against a cylinder, it can be treated as a screw. And the load, whatever load that is needed to be raised or lowered, is being pushed up the inclined plane or down the inclined plane. Let us see an animation to understand what a screw friction or what a screw really is. So this can be treated as the screw where an inclined plane is wound to a cylindrical core. And this inclined plane is wound such that it makes a helical shape. And when we use this screw for fitting into some parts, we will be applying the rotational force which will make it to the driving force. Nothing but the rotational force is converted to the translatory force. Then there are different types of screws. Some of them will have larger pitch for the inclined plane foundation and some of them will have the shorter pitch. These will be used according to the applications where we need to apply the force which leads the screw into the part. In this way, the rotational force will be converted into the translatory force and it will be the screw will be entered into the part which we need to implement. Now let us see the screw application in friction, the friction, screw friction application in screw jack. This is the screw jack, cross section of the screw jack, which is shown here, where W is the load which is being applied onto the screw jack. The, what are the parts that are mentioned for this screw jack we will be learning in the next slide. Let us first see the terminology which will be used for this screw jack application. And this is the shaft which we use to apply the force and the length of the shaft will be denoted with the letter L. This is the top view of the screw jack where P1 and P are the efforts that are being applied onto the shaft. So first let us understand what this screw jack is. The screw of a jack can be regarded as an inclined plane wrapped around a cylindrical core. It consists of a vertical screw and nut. This is treated as the vertical screw and this is treated as the nut. The load rests on the screw head and the nut forms the body of the screw. So whatever body that, is, that you are seeing in this figure, it will form a nut and the vertical shaft will be acting as the screw. And the load will be applied onto the head, screw head of the screw jack. In the figure, the P1 is the effort at the end of the lever that we are going to apply which will make the weight to lower or rise up and P is the effort at the mean radius. You can see in the figure the radius we are treating it as d by 2 and the effort P is applied at the circumference of that screw. Now let us see the screw jack parts. This is called as the body and this is the cross section of the body in which the screw 
internal screws are present. This forms the nut of the screw jack. These are the screws which are involved in the body. And this is the screw. This will act as the screw which will enter into the nut of the body. And this screw, this screw has the external threads. This screw has the external threads. And there is a provision for the shaft which we are going to use in this screw. This is called as the support part which will be head, held onto the head position of the screw on which we will be applying the load. This support will have the provisions to apply the washer and this is this washer which we will be providing into the support for the sealing of the screw head and the support. This is the cap screw which will be used for fixing the washer and screw head onto the screw. And this is called as the shaft or arm which we will use to apply the effort onto the screw jack. In this way, you can see the parts of the screw jack. Screw which is installed into the body and support or can be called as the screw head, washer and the tap screw. So now let us see the assembly of the screw jack, how the parts of the screw jack will be assembled. This is total screw jack. We will now see the individual parts of the screw jack that will be the screw head, that is the lead screw and this is the washer. This is the support or we can say the load header. This is the shaft or arm that is called as the screw on which the external threads are present and that is the nut which forms the body. In this way the parts will be assembled to form a complete screw jack. Now let us see the working of the screw jack. In the figure or in the animation, you can observe that there is a threaded cylinder which is external threads on the screw and this is being inserted onto the nut or the body of the screw jack. And when you rotate in clockwise and anticlockwise direction the screw, it will lower and rise inside the nut. It is the similar physical circumstance or physical involvement of the screw which makes the weight to raise or lower when you rotate this shaft using some effort. And if you consider the total circumference of the movement of the shaft which is being made and the radius as D, the total circumference which the effort is moved is 2 pi D and H is the pitch of the screw. Now the mechanical advantage can be obtained as 2 pi d by h that is distance through which the effort is moved by height through which the load is raised. Now we know that the pitch of the screw is very small as compared to the length of the rod so the mechanical advantage should be very large. Due to the frictional force between the different parts of the screw jack the efficiency is less than 1. So now let us understand this working in the figure using the figure. This is the figure shows the one revolution or one thread of the threads which are wound onto the screw. So the length of this horizontal length or we can say it as the vertical length and horizontal length. The horizontal length of this thread is taken as pi d which is 2 pi r nothing but the circumference of the screw or thread. Then alpha is the inclination of the thread 
on which the cylindrical core we are going to wound the thread and p is small letter p is the pitch of the screw so it can be treated as the vertical height of the pitch or vertical distance between the two threads so the load resting on the head of the screw is regarded in the same way as the block on the inclined plane right so why because we have understood what a screw is where we are saying that the screw is nothing but a two dimensional plane wound onto the cylindrical core so that cylindrical core which is being wound the 2d plane makes an inclined plane so we can say that that weight of or the load which we are going to raise or lower will be pushed or uh, pushed onto the rise rising the load or in up the inclined plane or lowering the load as pushing down or down the inclined plane so the height of the plane bc is the distance moved axially in one revolution of the screw in its nut that is pitch so whatever height for one revolution of the shaft or one revolution of the screw is made is nothing but the height raised or lowered will be the pitch of the screw p the base of the plane ab is the circumference of the thread at the mean radius that is pi d nothing but 2 pi r where d is the mean thread diameter the angle alpha of the plane is given by tan alpha is equal to p by pi d now let us identify the effort what would be the effort that is needed or effect of the effort that is being applied onto the shaft of the screwdriver consider the figure here the previous figure similar to the previous figure this is the free body diagram where the rectangle which is given shown in this figure is the load that is being raised or lowered on using the screwdriver so let w is equal to axial load on the screw and p capital p is the tangential force required at the mean radius to turn the screw please remember the effort which we are going to apply at the end of the shaft is treated as p1 and p is the force that is being applied at the mean radius position the effect p is required in two cases one is load being raised nothing but the load is climbing up the inclined plane effort required at the mean radius to lift the load that is to move up the load on inclined plane p is given as w tan alpha plus phi if you observe carefully alpha is the inclination of the thread here and phi is the friction angle the torque required to rotate the screw against the load t is equal to p into rm that is equal to if you substitute the value of p here w tan alpha plus pi phi into rm where rm is the mean radius nothing but d by 2 so in screw jack the effort is usually applied at end of a lever or handle fitted to the head of the screw so the effort required at the end of lever to lift the load is given as p1 into l where l is the length of the arm and p1 is the effort that is being applied at the end of the arm so that is given as p into rm so these two are equal the effort which is applied at the mean radius and the mean radius rm is equal to the effort that is being applied at the end of the arm length so that if you substitute these values into the previous equation you can obtain the value as p1 is equal to p into rm by l that is equal to w tan alpha plus phi into rm by l second case is load being lowered where the for motion down the plane that is lowering the load the effort required at the mean radius is given as p is equal to w tan alpha minus phi so if phi is less than alpha let us say 
that is inclination of alpha is greater than phi then the weight will start moving downwards so without any application of the external force the weight itself will be start to move downwards so what we will be doing to avoid this undesirable effect the value of phi that is friction angle for screw threads is kept larger than alpha that is screw inclination in this case an effort required to move the weight downward is given by the equation p is equal to w tan phi minus alpha so with this application of equation the weight will not be lowering by itself but some effort is needed to lower the load the effort p1 required at the end of the lever can be obtained by using the relation p1 into l is equal to p into rm so the efficiency of the screw jack is defined as the ratio of work done on load w in one revolution to the work done by the effort in one revolution so for identifying the efficiency of a particular screw jack depending on the application of the uh, various uh, uh, criteria let us say some heavy load is being lowered or uh, raised up or some lesser load is being lowered or raised up the efficiency of the screw jack will vary so for identifying the efficiency of particular screw jack we can be using this equation w into p by p into pi d where small letter p is the pitch of the screw and capital letter p is the low effort that is being applied at the mean radius right so using this equation efficiency is equal to w into p by p into pi d we can obtain the efficiency of the screw jack so work done on the load by work done by the effort but w by p we have the value as 1 by tan alpha plus phi and p by pi d we have the value as tan alpha so when you substitute this you can up, obtain the equation efficiency is equal to tan alpha by tan alpha plus phi so this is the efficiency of the screw jack now when the load is lowered against a force p the term reverse efficiency is used so it is defined as the ratio of the work done against p in one revolution of the screw to the corresponding work done by the load so we can apply this equation efficiency is equal to p into pi d by w by p nothing but the reverse of the previous case so we can write it as tan phi minus alpha by tan alpha so for condition of maximum efficiency if what we apply into the screw jack uh, the condition maximum efficiency can be obtained that we will see now the efficiency of screw jack is independent of load or effort applied whatever load the screw jack is lowering or raising it is independent for the efficiency of the screw jack when alpha is equal to 45 degrees minus 5 by 2 then efficiency will be maximum according to the equation we can understand that if alpha is 45 degrees minus 5 by 2 then the efficiency will be maximum and maximum efficiency can be given as efficiency max is equal to 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi so this is the condition for maximum efficiency and the maximum efficiency can be uh, given by the equation 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi this is about the screw screw jack and the efficiency of the screw jack so this concludes the session thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates